Uh, Marty, you're on. And um, Kathy, I think you were going to share your screen. Great. Okay. Um, do you want me to walk through this? Um, I, I think I was doing that, and then you're okay. picking up. Okay. I'll lead the first discussion. Yeah. Cool. So our very first item is uh, the agenda after the norms is for Zoom is this agenda, and we're going to begin uh, after reviewing it with the climate action updates, and it's just going to be a discussion from all of us. Uh, and some of you may have things on your screen that you'll want to share some updates. And then Ted will come back and talk about strategies for recruiting local partners. There are quite a number of different categories of partners that we could um, speak to in our local situations, whatever works for you. And he's going to share that with us. Then Linda will share with us using dialogue method to stimulate climate action. She's a long-term expert in the dialogue method. I've known her since early days of IAF. And then Ted will come back again and give you some national context for uh, engaging affiliates of those national organizations in your local situation. Then Karen is going to come on and share the menu of facilitation resources for our October events uh, that she's been collecting over time. And we all may have some new ones to add to that. The little updating report on the facilitation month of service report form. Caitlin has a a way for us to track what's going on, and she's going to share that. Then Marty will come back with some interest in the future Top Cat, that's Climate Action Team webinars. We've got a couple of ideas going, some dates. And finally, closing reflections and questions, which Rachel will lead if she's here. And if not, I believe Marty's going to take that. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's what we've got going on. Go ahead, Marty. Do we want to unshare the screen? Yeah, we're going to unshare the screen now because I'd like to be able to see everybody and see who's on the phone as well as we have our discussion. So, I may need to know how to do that. I'm not seeing you. Oh, up at, the very, up at the very top, Sunny, uh, uh -huh. there should be a closed screen uh, or stop share screen button on your, on your screen. On my screen, but there's not. The Helen. very, very top. Very top of the... I see it now. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good. Great. I see. I think I see just about everybody and some new people have joined us. That's great. So our first item is really updates. And, you know, after our last call where we really had more people joining in to get involved or start sharing what they're doing locally on top and climate action, um, we realized we needed to open this meeting up to more people because we can learn from each other. So the intent of this first item is to give some updates and to um, share insights or learnings or a challenge that you're having in your particular situation. And I think what we're going to do is have a, a go around where there's, there's, a, there's not too many on the call. So I think if we each watch our time and just say what we need to say, but, you know, spend a minute or two and tell us what you're already doing or what you're hoping to dive into, and then share with us an opportunity, an issue, an insight that you're having in doing this work. Um, so I'll begin, and then I'll just maybe lead us around the whole group visually here. So I'm in the San Francisco Bay Area, and I'm working on two fronts right now for the top climate action effort in particular. I'm doing a lot of stuff on climate, but one is seeking to find the local partner, um, which I think I found to do the facilitation work with, and that's the Contra Costa County, which is the county I'm in, which in the Bay Area is is probably the least developed in terms of knitting groups together around climate action. Um, so my good news is I've got good relationships and a lot of pieces to plug in. The bad news is that the person that's key for me is new on the job. And so my timeline for being able to do this work doesn't look really well timed for our October action. Um, I am putting out a couple other feelers for October, but um, it's raising the issue for me within this collective work that we're doing that we want to have this critical impact in October, but my vision is also that it's going to happen when it happens and it'll be really good. So that's, there's a timing issue there. And then the second part is I've got a lot of 
partners, mainly through the Center for Strategic Facilitation here, who've expressed a lot of excitement and interest, but are also just extremely busy. So we had committed to have a call before this call to tr so I could see if I was starting to form a local team, and it just fell apart. People are really busy. So I'm still working the front to get my, my collegial top people mm -hmm. together with me in the Bay Area. That's, that's what's cooking here. So maybe we can, I can take kind of an upper left. And Linda, do you want to give an update on what's happening with your work? Sure. And I'm <clears throat> glad that Catherine's on the line because she's going to uh, be helping me to co-host what we're doing and co-facilitate. So um, I guess there's really no update. I've been working with this um, group called the Tucson Architecture 2030. Um, you might recall from the last call that this is a group that started up in the Seattle area and was quite successful. It's spread now to many cities across the country. And we're very fortunate here in uh, Tucson because there's not a whole lot going on in climate change, unfortunately. But this is happening because one of the guys from the Seattle area came down here and uh, uh, got involved with uh, the U.S. Green Building um, Advanced Program, which is a little similar. And out of that has been this amazing launching of this program. So it's um, in a downtown part of our city. And it's bounded. And we're um, moving into the second phase where I think we've already found two or three major large biz, uh, building owners who want to come on board, which is great because then that opens us up to all the resources that have been unfolded in these various cities that we can take advantage of. So they've already done a strategic planning uh, process that I was invited to facilitate, but unfortunately I was uh, on vacation down in Mexico and didn't. And um, it, it was pretty basic. They came up with values and basically what they're doing. But, and they've been working over the summer. Um, and this is important for you to know, Catherine, there, there are these four subcommittees and the executive committee, and they've all taken little pieces. So now the idea is we want to smush everything together and do some real action planning. So I'm delighted to be working with Catherine because I'm new to top methods, don't know what I'm doing yet. But that's what they need. They need real good action planning so everyone can get on the same page. So hopefully, if we're lucky, we're going to be talking with some people in the executive committee. Uh, looks like it's probably going to be next week because of scheduling. So that's where it is. Great. Okay. So, um, Karen, do you have an update? I really um, think when I get to the uh, menu of facilitation resources, I'll be able to share where I am on that. And that would be my update. Your main update. Great. Thank you. Okay, and Sunny? Yeah, um, uh, since two of our team are here, I'll let them report further on our upcoming October 22nd event. Maybe Sherwood can talk about how we uh, imagined that uh, the other day. And then Olive Ann could say a word about how we, some of us reimagined it and we'll be reporting on it on, uh, at our Thursday meeting. Uh, after meeting with someone else, and also the high school training that's coming up. We've got that coming up. And then for me personally, I'm going to be uh, doing some facilitation for the Colorado350.org. They're having a statewide convergence um, this coming weekend, Saturday, Sunday, and I will be there. And it, moving toward, this is all Marty's doing. She's been, uh, she and her daughter have been in contact with that group for some time and we're looking toward maybe some top training for them in the fall so good okay well let's hop over to Sherwood and then Olive Ann and continue on the Colorado update okay so um, the uh, Colorado event uh, targeted for October 22nd is uh, on track and um, there, uh, the, for those of you who haven't heard, that's just briefly, it's, uh, about 50 people for a community forum, uh, on climate change. And we're, uh, in the Capitol Hill area of Denver, and then we're intending that there'd be a spinoff of 10 more community forums in the, in the specific neighborhoods of Capitol Hill. Uh, so representatives will be invited from 
each of the 10 to the, to the demo meeting. And then uh, along with some training, uh, we'll hope, hopefully replicate uh, the first one. And, and uh, then next year, who knows uh, where that's going to go. It's sort of uh, building it uh, as we go. Uh, but that's it in a nutshell. Um, so maybe um, uh, I'll just add one other footnote. Uh, between now and early November, I'll be teaching four top courses, two TFMs, a TSP, and a facilitation for innovation. So I'm working at getting climate change conversations uh, and workshops uh, built into those courses just to see how it goes. And mm, uh, okay. I, I think, uh, you know, I've just decided to take the plunge on that one and see uh, what we can come, how, how people respond. So that'll be a little experiment. You can keep me on your prayer list for that one. <laughs> I'm complete. <clears throat> Thank you. Olivan, you want to chime in with any additional information or insights or some things you're learning? Yes, thank you. Um, first of all, Sonny, I was not at the, we have a, to back up a little, we have a team of 11 people right now that we are calling the organizing committee. And some of us began in January and then we've added folks along the way, but this is a pretty set group of people now, I believe, for the October 22nd event. And so, um, Sonny, I was not at, I was not in the half of the uh, I'll say a word about that in a minute. <laughs> I was so just, sorry, I that was Jim. Half, I, I was on, Jim and I and Richard Wagner, who is a, another professor at Metro State, were at a table at a thing called a social impact fair, signing up interested students. And we had 12 who said they would be interested in some sort of help, either volunteering or internships or service learning. And um, we have yet to follow up. I've started that process, but we are not complete following them up. But we're hoping for at least one intern that will start to help us with the October 22nd event. Um, and so I guess um, to just mention that we are, a, we are a program that has, whoops, <laughs> we're a program that has three partners. One of those is Wartburg College West, which is an affiliate of Wartburg College in Iowa, at Waverly, Iowa, and then Chun, which is Capitol Hill United Neighborhoods, and my husband Jim is on the board of Chun, and the third one is, um, who is it, ICA USA, <laughs> who's the third one, um, ICA USA, and so we have um, the task of preparing some pretty quick um, materials that we can use to do calls on sponsorships. Um, I'm, I'm here today because of Karen Snyder who said, calm down and use your substitute to get on top of all the stuff you have to do for the, for the um, ACA work. So I have basically canceled teaching this week and my focus is going to be on getting money. We need to get some partners, some sponsors, sorry, not partners don't seem to have money. We need sponsors that can contribute um, a few thousand dollars to do the October 22nd event, and I'm working on that. Um, Thank you. So I'm complete. Great. Money is entering the picture. That's always yeah. good. And Holly Van and I are also doing, uh, should it come off, we don't know quite yet, um, a training for high school students from the Chun neighborhoods on September 29th and October 1st. And you didn't know this yet, but we do have one registrant. <laughs> Yay, registrar. one. <laughs> As of yesterday. <laughs> Ten or so to go. Um, I just want to mention the, the meeting Ollie Van wasn't at, which was with a woman named Maria Tolero, who's the, um, she's starting off, she's a former philosophy professor who completely left the academic field, except for the fact that her research on climate action and climate change is brilliant. And we were looking at her, uh, some of her audio visuals for possibly using in October. And she had some uh, brilliant insights as we talked through our intent of the meeting and in terms of how we ought to do that and uh, what we'd share and what we'd ask people to talk about with each other and those sorts of things. It, it was really helpful to have that conversation with her. So um, things are moving forward. Great. Thank you, Sunny. Thank you, all of Colorado. So, um, so Courtney, um, 
you want to share with us what's cooking for you, how okay. you're plugging in, what you're learning? Uh, yeah, so this is our invite, and I think I sent it to you guys. Is it reversed? No, it's there. Yeah. Okay. Can see, people can see it. Yeah. Uh, and so there's going to be three focus arenas. And where, uh, Courtney, where is this again? Just so we're all grounded here. Well, I sent it. I, I, could, I guess I could share it, share my screen. I put yeah. it on my desktop. Yeah, that'd be great. You want to quick share the whole thing? That would be good. Yeah. Okay. We can see the whole. Can you see the it? The whole pitch. There it is. Okay. Okay. Okay, so uh, it's happening on October 26th. We're planning to have about 100 to 150 people, uh, about uh, students, and then we'll have like the mayor and the, uh, the chief of police and the county attorney general and, and other movers and shakers, and then like 50% students. And we'll start out with like five minute TED Talks from each one of these arenas. And so we're gonna talk about our individual identities, our society and our local culture, which is around police and neighborhood connections, and then uh, environmentally conscious citizens. And so we're gonna uh, have small groups moderated about 30 people and people rotate through each one of the three arenas. And we got the space donated. And just this weekend, we got the food donated from a local um, cafe. So um, everything in the community of practice, the local community of practice is helping and our current uh, MTOP cohort is also going to help with facilitation as well as with uh, young people that have recently gone through the YFL. And Courtney, could you just say a sentence or two about the catalyst for this event? What was it that sparked this coming together this way? Because you've, obviously you're pulling people from different issue areas into a common focus. What was the catalyst that brought people together? How did this? Um, well, uh, the, the gathering here in Phoenix, uh, we talked about doing uh, uh, town hall series in October and so I said I would do it and so then I we talked to the community of practice and the community of practice says they want to do it and um, then we just made the flyer got the space for free it's an amazing place we used to have neighborhood connections and I mean I'm sure this is rooted in some of the neighborhood organizing I did with ICA's methods for about over 15 years here in Phoenix so it's pretty easy to just pull this group of people so your networks you used your networks that you had then mm -hmm. to kind of pop this yeah. yeah, yeah, and the fact that really nobody's owning it, that it's just a community event that's free and it's by the people is very powerful. Um, so I made sure that uh, just even on the email, it's just my personal email. And, you know, I've worked with all these groups. I've worked with neighborhoods. I've worked with the police. The environment is a piece I don't know as much about, so I'm asking for Linda's help with that. And we might just show an inspirational video to just show different pieces. And then our youth builder doing a garden challenge project where if anybody wants garden boxes, they will build them for their site. Um, and then I have Muslim reform movement leaders that are flying in town to uh, speak real quick and then be in the breakout group around the, our individual identities. And we, we kind of massage that question a little bit because we want to make sure it wasn't just focused on the Muslim reform movement. So that's where we're talking about where can we move from living the letter of the golden rule to the spirit of the golden rule. Then run a police and neighborhood connections. We know that people are going to talk about racism and the current issues, but we're going to really focus on uh, what's mutually agreed upon and then how can we bridge this divide and what can we do about it. And then with the common good and systems thinking, we're inviting a lot of, there's local business partnerships and local consortiums that are focusing on um, the local economy. And so we thought that would be a piece to really also talk about our local environment and what we can build upon. Great, thank you. Yeah. Oh, I, you know, just one other thing to add to that is that uh, I was working with Phoenix Elementary School District and they have like 15 elementary schools and they're worried about the election and um, that th there could potentially be riots in Phoenix, especially what they're seeing with these middle and elementary school kids, the kind of conversations they're overhearing at the dinner table. And so that was another thing that really pushed this to happen before November, as, long, as well as everything, the story of saying that what you all are doing has really helped, but that we're gonna have commitments of what people wanna see uh, two years from now in their local communities, regardless of the election. So that's another piece we're just trying to do um, is people taking ownership of their local communities. So I'm yeah. <laughs> so if you can, really if you can, yeah. And I know if I, as we hear more of these, I know that there's things we wanna 
want to discuss and comment on them, but I want to see if we can get through our check-ins and then have a little time for that. This does is anyone checking my time, by the way, about how much time we, we allocated? 20 minutes, I think we can probably go a little over because I think Linda's going to be a little under perhaps in her time, but um, I do want to be cognizant of the time. I do want us to have a time to discuss what's coming up for us as we hear these updates. So um, thanks so much, Courtney. And Catherine, do Hi. you, welcome. Um, do you want to say something about what drew you here or any comment on the work you're going to be doing with Linda Eleanor in Tucson? Um, you know, if Linda asks me about something, I always say yes. So um, it, it sometimes takes us a while to pull it all together, but we eventually do. And um, it's really exciting to be able to have a role. It needs to be small, but this facilitation role that I can support and I am really excited about doing. So hi, Marty Hugs. <laughs> it's yeah. been a while. Yeah. So um, you know, Linda is pretty much taking the lead, and I am okay. happy to support. And so I'm complete. Good. Great. Thanks. So Sean has been on calls before in Minnesota. Sean, can you give us a, a snapshot of what, um, where you are in your project and what you're learning or what's emerging as a challenge or an opportunity? Hello. Uh, both Rachel and Sean here, okay. and Sean will be doing workshops with Transition Towns. Well, Rachel is. Yeah, Rachel is, and then I am uh, facilitating a meeting with uh, city staff and uh, volunteers from 40 metro suburbs to begin uh, working on their climate action plans, modeling their strategies after the state climate action plan with staff from the Minnesota Environmental Quality Board. So we would like to plug in any uh, ICA or top people into cluster with their own suburb to be in touch with how they can work with their city council to adopt a climate action plan by the end of 2017 as part of their comprehensive plans. Great, thank you. Ted, do you have uh, any updates? Oh, this is Rachel. I don't know if you can, oh, see, Rachel. Me. can you see me. I don't know if you can. You can't. Oh, yeah, Rachel. Yes, I do Rachel, see you. Gonna... You do see me. I'm, I'm just, I just pop in here. Um, I am uh, uh, working furiously. Your voice is going out a little, Rachel. At, um, um, transition times, they're getting together on Sundays for the next five weeks. Okay, the, um, the meeting, and we're hoping by the editions or um, uh, consensus workshops, and so that's the most I'm doing right now, and uh, we're hoping you're Cheryl You're going will, in um, and out, Rachel. Can you, can you change your relationship to the phone to see if your voice can come in better? No, I don't hear her at all. Can you be better? Turn off the camera. Um, now, she, she, turn off the camera. Kathy's saying turn off the camera. Okay. Turn off the camera. I don't turn know off. how to do that. You don't know how to do that. Okay. But anyway, Rachel is going to be getting Transition Towns to work on focus conversations. Okay. Okay, so I so now they're. I'm not sure if Rachel, Sean and Rachel. We can still hear you. Can you hear us? Your voice is still questionable. Do you, Rachel, do you want to try to give a short report and see if it's going to come in? If not, we'll move on. I think you should move on. Just go ahead. And okay. Move on. Yeah, because I still hear kind of the weird. The weird sounds said. So I was going to bump back up to Ted. I'm not sure if you're reporting on a specific project now or just what you're going to report on later. Um, there are a couple projects I can report on now and save a couple of them as they relate to other agenda items. Right. Um, we did get a uh, email today from uh, Melanie Chase mm -hmm. in Portland, Oregon, uh, who couldn't join us today, uh, but says that all is progressing well. 
uh, in Portland, um, and uh, she's gotten some other uh, uh, top colleagues to uh, join her uh, in serving uh, the, uh, the date. They don't have a date yet, but in terms of local partners, they're working with the uh, Climate and Health Statewide Coalition uh, and the Oregon Public Health uh, Division of the State Health Department. So she's hoping to uh, uh, have an event uh, with these local partners, and she didn't name who her other top colleagues were, but um, that is her report. Um, in Portland. In Portland, Oregon, yes. And then um, SAVA has scheduled a meeting uh, call for this Thursday uh, with Mark Davies in Oklahoma. We're gonna be exploring whether uh, something can happen in Oklahoma. Uh, and um, actually, I'm trying to see, we. Whether I don't think she joined the call, but uh, I, if she doesn't join the call, uh, I will follow up with Linda Baker in Austin, Texas, because I don't know what her story is. Um, my reports on uh, Milwaukee and Pittsburgh, I can and Chicago, I can make later when we're talking about those agenda items. Uh, but we do have a I, Marty. I do want to note we have a couple mystery people who have only logged in with their phone numbers. Um, yeah, I, I see them. I'm working my way down. We're going to find out who they are soon. <laughs> Why would no, I, from New York? I'm sorry, who is on the phone? 917? That's Liesl from New York. Okay, well, do you want to go next since you popped up? Do you want to give us an update on what's, what's emerging for okay, your work well, in New York? Yeah, I think we're probably not going to be able to have an event till spring, but we I have permission to use a pretty big venue four times this year. And so we're going to kind of lead up to it in terms of engaging different groups. And yesterday we had the UN Association and 350.org and a few others uh, previewed a little a film on climate change. And, um, and they were very enthusiastic about, what, well, let's do something about it instead of preaching to the choir. I did raise the power of the image change uh, workshop. There were about 60 people there that, that I did in, uh, in January. That I because I think the, a lot of young people, especially, are saying, "Well, why aren't it, why isn't everyone else as on this as we are?" And I said, "I really, um, you know, from the audience, I said I had this life-changing moment when I realized that my image was I've got enough issues. Uh, somebody else take this issue. I'm 70 years old." And everybody laughed, and uh, some of it was identification laughing, I think. I said, so if we don't take on that bystander phenomenon, uh, we don't engage people who otherwise, if their image didn't shift, you know, um, would, be, would stay bystanders, was my, my hypothesis. So my thought was maybe this spring we could really focus on the image shift. And I've tried to work yeah, a little you. bit with transition streets as a more urban phenomenon thinking and of thank you for that insight um, thank you please well thank on the insight on what kind of some things you feel need to happen in this conversation so um ernest i'm gonna now move over this way welcome ernest if you could unmute and check in with us how are you doing what's emerging in new orleans Ernest, I see you're unmuted. Are you there? Linda, any suggestion of why Ernest might not be? Um... Okay. She might have stepped away. Yeah, she could have. Well, she unmuted when I when I called on her, so I think I think she's trying to talk. But what I'm going to suggest is that we move on and then um, come back to Ernest again. So, Caitlin, um, welcome. Is Caitlin gonna be reporting later, I think, right? She um, will be, so we can skip Chicago yeah, right now, except for our okay. mystery guest here. Okay, and is Karee um, on the call? Karishma is a board member of ICA uh, USA. And uh, if she's not on the call now, we can talk about Chicago later. Okay, okay. I just noticed that it looked like Ernest was trying to talk. Ernest, we can't hear you. 
You're not coming through. If you could mute yourself. If everybody, we're getting a lot of background noise in general. So if everybody can mute yourself who's not speaking, that'd be great. Great. Thank you. This is the grand Zoom experiment here. So I'm going to bump up to Suzanne Esper. Welcome. Hello. Suzanne. Welcome. Hi. Sorry, I was not able to join you at your at the top of the hour. I'm here to uh, observe, listen, uh, hear how things are going. Uh, so I don't have anything to report um, uh, per se, but that's why I wanted to send attend your call today. Great. Okay, great. Well, we're both in California. We can maybe cook something up in our state. So thanks for being on the call, Suzanne. Okay, now I'm going to see someone is on in the 312 area on the phone. If you could un, um, unmute your phone and we want to welcome you and introduce yourself. We'll find out who this mystery person is. Is anyone there from 312? Well, there's a number of us. Uh, it's 312-408-0328. That's the winning number in today's national lotto. And the winning number looks unmuted, but nothing's coming through. So mm -hmm. I think we're going to... Oh, here. Hello. I think I think we've got, we're gonna we're complete on our updates at this point unless somebody pops in and has sound that um, that we didn't hear so far. So just as a way to kind of close out this, um, I'm just wondering if if somebody heard something that really was exciting or provided a new insight for how we're doing this work. Anybody have a comment? And you can, if you're visual, you can just kind of raise your hand here, and I can. See who, what, what did you hear today that was, yeah, sure would. Hmm. Okay, so um, the, the Phoenix uh, event sounds really exciting. I was interested to know if, um, what the, what you think the balance is between information sharing, new information sharing uh, versus people already being knowledgeable and so forth about this issue. So what, what is kind of your assumption on the participants' level of awareness and so forth? Um, I would say that uh, there will probably be new levels of awareness based on climate change, just on the couple of times I've been in groups where we've showed climate change videos and people's reactions. So I think there will be a new level of awareness. Uh, part of the outcome is we're going to share uh, a spreadsheet that'll have everybody's contact information. So then people will be able to engage with each other further. And then we're gonna do personal commitments on a sticky wall as they uh, go away. What's one thing that they're uh, committed to working on and what's the first step they're gonna take. But we were thinking this is more of a gathering to build awareness and have individual uh, action implementation. That um, the church that we're holding it at one of their actions is they're going to open up an interface space uh, for secular and all faith traditions can come and even reserve at different times of the week. So they're going to create an interface space. The youth builders are doing a garden challenge project where they're going to build uh, garden boxes for anybody that wants them. And they'll just uh, start up a schedule of that. And then on the police and neighborhood, we thought maybe we could take a pledge of what people would do moving forward. So we were thinking of like a broad commitment piece for each one, but then there, it would really be the individual actions. I'm completely Thanks, sure. that's great. Okay. Anything else that, that, was, that was exciting or that you heard that stimulated your thinking about doing this kind of top and climate action work? Hello, uh, can you hear me? This is Ernest. Hey, Ernest, yay. Hi, welcome. Hi. Well, I, I'm, by listening, there's something I can offer. Um, I'll be talking with the National Program Director for the uh, National Network of Public Health Institutes. And someone said, and they have people across the US, uh, a person in each state around health issues. 
And someone mentioned about the need to have partners that are interested in this. So if you could send me what states or what cities you're in that you need some partners when I next talk to oh, Lolita Ross, who's the program uh, manager for the National um, Public Health Institute's organization, I can ask if there's someone in those states that could potentially be interested in working with a ICA climate uh, initiative. And we are, we will, we're talking about um, the executive, the director there took TFM a long time ago and she's talked to us about scheduling a TFM in DC and one in New Orleans for all of the staff. So I think this would be a great opportunity to get some potential partners that are interested in climate change and get the contact information for those states or those cities that are looking for additional partners. And uh, so the, and the last thing I'd want to say is that we're groping in, <laughs> we're struggling in Louisiana. It's been a month since the floods in central Louisiana with uh, about 110,000 homes. Uh, affected. So there's not too much going on here except recovery issues, but I'll be talking with um, um, GFSC, the Gulf um, um, Service Corps. Uh, so we'll be doing some stuff, we hopefully, in Louisiana about training the trainers, the people that have gone through TFM, to work with the populations in central Louisiana. Um, in terms of uh, coping with recovery efforts. So that's something that we're doing here is we just didn't expect that flooding to happen. And uh, we have some work with the National um, Wildlife Federation here, but that work had been, they have three people that are interested in coming to our top methods and we want to make sure that more people from the National Wildlife Federation do that. We've just been uh, pushed off course because we had um, um, a pipeline, an oil pipeline cut in the Gulf with some 56,000 gallons of uh, oil. So they're busy cleaning that up now. So we're dealing with lots of different climate issues in different ways. But if there's anything I can do to help in terms of uh, providing contact information, uh, just let me know. Okay, and I'm complete. Ernest, could you just for expediency, could you put, give us your email right now? so that people could email you about showing interest in getting a contact with a partner? Oh, absolutely. My email is my first name, Ernest, and you see it on the screen, E-R-N-E-S-S, -S, dot F as in facilitate, I as in leader, I as in L as in leader, I as in institute. So Ernest dot F-L-I at gmail dot com. Great. Thank you for that. You are. Thank you for that for that update. Yeah, New Orleans is one of our frontline places in this country for climate impacts. So, okay. So, um, Olive Ann, I see one hand, and then I'm going to move us along because we have um, exceeded time, and we've got a lot of other good information. Olive Ann. I just wanted to say it's exciting that it seems like this is still growing a lot in 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 uh, Denver. It, it's overwhelming that it's growing so much. We have three different neighborhoods that want to start now, and we we can't. I mean, no, but um, but it's exciting that Oklahoma is moving forward. And uh, along that line, I was wondering if it was either possible with technology or just possible on paper to create some sort of a flow chart with all these locations so that we can have a, a visual of how um, that growth is happening. Uh, it's just a long-term, you know, I guess, a long-term suggestion. I'm complete. Great, thank you for that. We do have the map and I know that, um, you know, maybe we can talk about getting, how to make sure that it's really easy that all of us know who we are, which project we're, affi we're affiliated with and our contact information. Like right now, I don't know how to find all of you easily. And I know it's been sent out to me, but just making that really easy because I think this kind of sharing we're doing here, we should be also reaching out to each other as much as we can to learn and, and gather information and offer support. 
for these projects. So with that, I know we could discuss more and maybe we need to be providing more time for conversation, but I want to move on to um, Ted with strategies for recruiting local partners. Great, and uh, if we could just go back a second to the uh, agenda. Can we post that back up? Yeah. Um, so I listed here uh, some items uh, that could be uh, considered for outreach, uh, approaching community organizations. I think Denver's an example of that with Chun. Uh, affordable housing groups. I uh, provided a couple uh, contacts in Portland, Oregon for Melanie. Uh, Faith-based green teams. Uh, Sean uh, is also very active with uh, faith-based groups up in the Twin Cities. Uh, business associations, park advisory boards, community gardens. These are just examples. What I like to do at the, uh, both for the last agenda item, uh, providing an update uh, on Milwaukee uh, and give some examples of how these groups have uh, helped uh, us start our planning in Milwaukee. Uh, Amy Murphy, uh, who was not able to join us today, is the top facilitator in Wisconsin who has uh, uh, agreed to do this. And we have a date of Tuesday, October 18th. And we have a tentative location that is just waiting for Amy to go out uh, and uh, assess for her purposes of uh, what, how we might want to facilitate. And this location itself is strategic to our collaboration we're putting together. Um, last week on Friday, we had our probably our third planning call. Um, and on the first call, I did outreach to uh, community development organizations that uh, I have contacts with and have known in Milwaukee. Uh, some of you may know David Flowers, uh, with uh, an ICA colleague from Milwaukee. Uh, David is uh, bordering on retiring now, but he's done a lot of service learning with universities in Milwaukee. And his daughter uh, works for one of the uh, premier, premier uh, environmental groups in Milwaukee called Urban Ecology, which has uh, three neighborhood sites. Um, and the executive director of that participated on one of our uh, uh, first planning calls. Um, and uh, that led to a conversation in our first planning call. And I would just stress, I think this is the real advantage uh, locally uh, to doing uh, these events is that in planning them, uh, the groups that were on the original call all had heard of each other uh, and respected each other's work, but had not really ever done anything uh, together. Um, and in the first conversation, uh, biking, uh, promoting bicycling uh, came up as a sustainable strategy that people were interested in. Well, it turned out um, they had more in common than just that. It turned out that they are all, three of the organizations are all advocates for the same new bike path to be done on the northwest side of Milwaukee, which is the uh, minority uh, community uh, that had its most recent uh, unrest over uh, police shooting, shootings in Milwaukee. Um, and so consequently, our uh, potential site for hosting this is at a nature center in actually a state, Wisconsin State Forest that is in the city limits of Milwaukee. Um, and so uh, that would be part of that. The other uh, aspect that this brought in is re leveraging relationships that different community groups have. Our community development uh, group in Milwaukee also suggested <clears throat> engaging and inviting, which we did, a representative from the Milwaukee Metropolitan Milwaukee Water District. And it turns out that, well, I thought originally these were separate issues, stormwater management, bike path, doing separate groups. It turns out that actually the uh, water district is looking at a, a green infrastructure that might parallel this new bike path. And so I had a very substantive call today with the staff person from that agency who uh, that agency itself is formulating a climate action plan and was very interested in how this could uh, connect. 
concept. And so uh, uh, Amy Murphy and I uh, hopefully will be having a conversation uh, this week about how that could impact uh, her design. Uh, so I think if anything, what we're designing in Milwaukee based on the local interest is probably consensus building on what are the main priorities for moving these projects forward. <coughs> Excuse me, in Milwaukee, but the point I'm making on this agenda item before we move on, engaging local partners into what they're doing and how they could be collaborating uh, really can give you the design framework for your venue and for your event um, that then provides them with outcomes based on asking the right questions. Uh, and I'm complete on this topic uh, unless there are uh, questions or other comments that this has generated. Otherwise, I guess we go back to you, Linda. All right. Well, um, it was out of uh, some of the things that you just said uh, when I shared uh, at our last uh, guide team meeting about what I did up in um, Northern California this summer that I was asked to maybe share some of that. I um, let me get my screen going here. Uh, I was um, I had this great opportunity that was given to me through the. Um, uh, Transition Town USA uh, office, uh, Carolyn Staten's her name. Uh, can you all see that there? Let's see, I'll make this larger. Ah, uh oh, has stopped to share windows closed. Oh, how did that happen? Let me try this again. Excuse me. Hmm. Went away. Don't know why it went away. Hmm. All right. Well, I'm just going to keep talking while I try to find this. Um, I'm going to take it back here. I think I have to redo my screen. So, anyways, uh, Carolyn Staten, uh, she is the U.S. Director of Transition Towns, and she, she and I have known each other for quite some time. I let her know because I used to live up there that I was coming up, and she and another friend said, "Oh, why don't why don't we put on some kind of climate um, uh, dialogue?" And I said, "Oh, I'd love to do that." So they promoted it, and we did it. We had about. Uh, 10 people. Now, can you see my screen or no? Hello? Can no, you guys see no, not, not yet. No. It's okay. not up yet. All right. Okay. At least I found it. Now I've, now I've got to... Oh, this is really weird. This is really, really, really weird. I'm in some kind of weird place and I can't get out of it. Um, okay. Now let me try it. Now I think I can share my screen and you'll see it. Share screen. There it is. It did not share yet. Well, oh, here it goes. Oh, there it goes. Oh, gosh. Yay. All right. It's so, up. anyways, um, Marty suggested that I, I give just a little bit about uh, about the background and what I did. Uh, it was a two hour, two and a half hour session. Um, so, um, well. How, I, I'm assuming many of you know what Bohm or Bohmian dialogue is. It was developed by um, David Bohm, who was a quantum physicist who I studied with way back in the uh, late 80s, early 90s. He's now deceased, unfortunately. Um, he was a quantum physicist who turned to philosophy late in life, uh, and he also um, developed dialogue out of his meetings with a man, Patrick Damari, who was a social psychologist in London, who really felt that the problem in our world today had lots to do with um, our culture and not so much the individual dysfunction. In fact, in fact he felt that individual dysfunction uh, really was a result of cultural uh, uh, incoherence. And he also talked a lot with Krishnamurti, who was an Eastern mystic. And out of all of that, he devised uh, this form of dialogue that many of us have been using for some time in the 90s and on. Uh, so I'm just going to very quickly go through what dialogue is, and then I'll talk a little bit more about how I did that particular dialogue. It's a wonderful way to get people uh, together talking about climate change. And actually, Bone was quite, quite concerned about our um, environment. He felt that, you know, we had lots of problems in our thinking process that has now led to the problems that we're seeing in the world today. So the, the root definition of dialogue is dia and logos, which means through meaning. Di uh, Bohm really felt that a change of meaning that was shared changes the world. So a change of meaning is a change of being for him. 
versus another Greek word, percussion or concussion, connotes just the opposite, a sort of breaking apart. Now, as I said, David Bohm was a quantum physicist, and so what he really gave to us was a worldview that I think can really help shift the way we communicate if we really integrate it well. Most of us still speak as though there are separate things in the world, and David Bohm continuously reminds us, no, 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 we're all one connected being, if you will. And so dialogue is, is about, through meaning, um, mending the fragmented ways we see things and we break things up through our language. Uh, I usually like to start trying to explain what dialogue is by talking about the communication continuum, which runs from pure bone and dialogue, uh, which is a free flowing of meaning versus discussion and its, you know, its close cousin debate. Um, as we know in discussion, um, we usually are trying to find out who's right, who's wrong, right? Debate's even worse. There we're just trying to sock out, you know, our opponent. And the only thing that we really listen for in debate and sometimes in discussion is enough ammunition from our opponent so that we can win our points of view. And we, many of us sit in business meetings and this is sort of the level of communication that we're uh, used to. Whereas in dialogue, we are not trying to come to any particular fixed conclusion, right? So uh, it, it allows a lot more safety in the room to uh, make all voices heard. And that's the point. We're trying to get a larger shared uh, vision of what we really feel about whatever it is we're talking about, rather than breaking it apart and only trying to prove one point is better than another point. Now, there's been a long history of dialog dialogic forms. Bohm was not the originator of a lot of what he um, surfaced. Certainly, the Greeks had it in, in the early Greeks in their democracy, the early forms of democracy. Uh, the Quakers use it in their business meetings. Native Americans had a version of it. Martin Buber, a lot of the um, existential philosophers uh, talk about um, lots of the dialogic principles. Mainly where Bohm was really um, making his contribution was in the metaphysical component, <clears throat> which means he calls it the proprioception of thought. Like if I wave my hand, I know I'm waving my hand. I can see it in the air, but I don't often know that my thoughts are affecting my behavior. And as groups of people come to talk, we don't often know that it's the underlying assumptions and beliefs and values that are having us talk about things in the way we talk about them. So dialogue, Bohm dialogue is very much about getting the root, getting to the root of how we really feel and think about things. Uh, why is dialogue used? Well, it's used in a lot of ways. Um, I used to teach it and would say that if your group takes it on, it's a fabulous way to break out of rigid thinking because it really does allow all voices to be heard. It's great for creativity. It's great for building shared meaning among teams or people who use it all the time. And uh, I think it's fabulous for climate change work because if you're taking a group of people who have never talked about climate change, and I think that's one of our biggest problems today is people just don't want to talk about it for many, many reasons. They're afraid uh, of being embarrassed. They're afraid of being shamed. Uh, none of us want to change our ways of being in the world. There's all kinds of taboos about talking about climate change. So dialogue is a great, safe way to have a shared conversation about it. Um, because it does, it does allow people to express their deeply held fears, beliefs, values um, that they're holding around it. Some of the main building blocks for dialogue, um, we used to do a four and a half day training. We're not going to do that anymore. My ex-partner and I have decided to take our workshop uh, virtual. So we're going to do a series beginning in the new year where we talk about these building blocks. These are the skills really necessary for dialogue to take place. Suspension of judgment is the most important one. You can't have dialogue if people are judging each other's input. So there's ways we talk about how we do that. We hold our judgments lightly and allow new information to come in. I mentioned assumption identification. That's the metacognitive piece. So we're uh, constantly using our inquiry skills to help us surface beliefs and assumptions. So if I am in a dialogue with Marty and I hear her saying something and I'm not clear on where she's coming from, I would inquire into what her assumptions are that led her to the conclusions that she's offering the group. Reflection is very important. We uh, allow a lot of silence in dialogue so that we can reflect on what we're hearing more deeply. And we talk about the three levels of listening, that we're not just listening to ourselves, although that's important, of course. Uh, we're not just listening to each other, but that also is important. Uh, what's very important and isn't done often is looking for the whole meaning that a group is trying to get at. 
so we teach that. Um, so if I were going to um, suggest that you use dialogue for maybe a climate change talk, what I would suggest is the first thing, and we all know this, we do it anyways as facilitators, to build the container by asking for a go round on what's drawing you to this particular dialogue. Now, when I did it up in um, Sebastopol with the Transition Town group, um, they, we of course invited a lot of people who were in the Transition Town, so they knew a lot about climate change. Uh, but I had a specific topic looking at the divides within the climate change field from deniers all the way through people who accept in our activists. So we wanted to look more deeply into how do we bridge that divide as people who are concerned about climate change? So that was basically how I set that one particular thing up. Um, so I will usually, if I'm uh, introducing dialogue for the first time into a new group, I'm not going to try to really train them in dialogue. The most important thing is to talk briefly, as I have here to you today, about these building blocks. And then I'll take them right down to uh, building the guidelines. And Everybody kind of knows these guidelines because they've been out for a long time. It's almost like in the zeitgeist now. I'll usually do it one of two ways. I have a little clip from Dances with Wolves, which looks at a Native American council um, process, um, trying to figure out what to do with Kevin Costner out there. And it's, it's quite different from what you would see in a regular meeting. And I'll pull, I'll have them pull the guidelines out of that little three minute clip. Or if I don't have access to that, I didn't this particular evening, I'll just ask them to close their eyes for a moment and think back to uh, meetings that they have been in that really worked well, you know, that just were right on. And usually they'll come out with the exact guidelines that we want them to come out. And these are just some of them. Each group will have their own. One person at a time, no side talking, watch pacing. We don't want to go too fast or too slow. And I have a little thing I do there. I put the stick in the middle, a talking stick in the middle, and we only use the talking stick to slow the conversation down, which is what puts more reflection into it. We go over the importance of silence, respect for all voices, no need for closure or decision. That's very key because if there's a need for closure at the end of the dialogue, we'll fall right back into discussion. Uh, one thing that's important about dialogue from a facilitation standpoint, since we're all facilitators here, is we view the facilitation role very differently. While um, I, as the initial facilitator or guide, will create the container, once it's been created, uh, I step in as a full participant. So I then ask and invite everyone in the circle to be paying attention to our process. And if someone's noticing that someone's not saying anything, any of us can act as a facilitator and inquire, you know, ask the person not speaking to um, offer their opinion. So it's, it's, it's very different in that way. Bohm really felt that um, any sort of coercion, any hierarchy in a circle could ruin the creativity of it. And from the um, Quaker tradition, one of the main things we say is to speak when the spirit moves you. Often people, when they're not familiar with dialogue, will say, well, I don't know when to speak. It This seems weird. You're not asking me any questions because often we'll just start with a silent start. And that's the basic thing. It, it's almost a, what I'll tell, say, say to people, it's almost a visceral sense. You know when the spirit's moving you. And we're trying to build on each other's thoughts. So there's not a lot of me tooism in the dialogue circle. So it's really learning how to think together. And groups, the longer they do it, actually start to think together really well. Then the next thing that you're going to want to do is find an opening question that has the most energy for the group. There's a lot of ways to do it. Um, there's a two-step process. I won't go into all these, but uh, these are all techniques for finding at that moment in time with this group, what's the opening question that has the most energy for the group? Because that's what you're trying to find. Um, so you set the amount of time. As I said, I did it for about two and a half hours, and I usually allow about 20 minutes at the end for reflection. And I had this great, since I'm in the in MTOP uh, program with Courtney right now, um, and I just came back from it, I had this great insight that we usually just would reflect on the content, and then we would reflect on the process. Um, the process reflection is good because if the group's going to continue, it's how we learn together, how we learn to learn. We go over what did we notice in our process? What could we do better next time? In the content reflection is really what our takeaways are. But I had this insight coming out of MTOP. I'm going to do a focused conversation on the experience because it really leads the group down the various ways that we think about something we've just shared, some experience we just shared. So I'm excited to try that. So unless there's any questions, that's what I wanted to share with you. It was just a wonderful way to um, have a conversation um, 
with a group of people around climate. Uh, it was very rich. That I encourage anybody to do it. Questions or anything you'd like to ask? This is Marty. I just want to thank you for that because you and I have had a number of conversations about how dialogue can really complement top. Um, in some ways, our methods have the same root intentions and yet use very different means, top being a more structured means, dialogue being the unstructured. But they, there's very interesting ways in designs they can complement each other. So thank you for this introduction to it. My pleasure. It was fun. So Linda, I just wondered whether you could say, what, what did you think was the result of this conversation you had with transitions? Well, again, we weren't, you know, in dialogue, it's tricky because we're not trying to do anything. I think ha were I to be living up there, uh, it, it, there was a lot of desire to continue the conversation. Uh, it, it actually attracted uh, people like from the 350.org organization. It attracted a uh, really interesting man from a sustainability leadership program. I mean, there were re really interesting people in the room. So I think if we had continued, we might have, I don't know what we might have done together. That's what's, you, you never know what's going to come out of a dialogue. It's, but it, what's nice is that it's a slow build in some sort of place where action can spring forth. That's why I'm very, as Marty said, I think there's lots of complementary things that when I add the more action, the more decision-making piece to it, which I think Top has, I think it could go really far. So I've always thought you want to start with an open-ended conversation so everybody just gets everything out about all their feelings or values or beliefs, all that junk that holds us back. Because if you don't get that out and you don't build strong enough relational bonds, then you may say you want to go and do something together, but then it always boomerangs, right? Because you didn't really talk about some blocks or some issues you have to move into action. So that I, I, that's about a, the best I can say. I mean, I, I think that a lot of people got a lot out of it. They, they seem very, uh, I think the main thing they got out of it was acknowledgement of these divides because that's what we wanted to talk about. So they really got better at sensing that there are certain belief systems that very conservative people hold that are getting in the way of moving towards action. And so how can we get around that? We talked a lot about how we can get around those blocks. So that's probably the closest I can say. That's good. Thank you. Uh, this is Sherwood. Um, so uh, it, uh, the word that came up for me, it, it sounds much more like a convener for a dialogue and a facilitator for a focused conversation. Um, and uh, it's quite, quite interesting that you launch it and then jump in and take off your hat and be a participant. So just uh, that sort of flow and that difference is, uh, is cool. I'm complete. <clears throat> This is Marty, and I'm going to jump in. We didn't set a timekeeper for this meeting, and I'm kind of the one that blew the time at the beginning in my item, but I just want to honor that some people might be thinking we're going to get off in about seven minutes. We have a little bit more to cover than probably we can cover in that amount of time, but I think I'd like to just keep us moving um, on our time frame because I know people probably do have plans to move on to other things. So in, unless something urgent needs to be said. I really want to thank Linda for that. And, and let's move on to um, the research that we're developing through Karen's work. On uh, how actually, we can... you're skipping my part. Oh, Ted, oh my goodness. So yes, these, these, right. should, these should all be live links. Uh, so and... Ted, name your part and, and put it up. We can put the agenda back up on the screen. Please. Name, name your part. What are you doing? The Contacts for Engaging Affiliates of National thank Organization. Thank you. Um, and so um, the guide team uh, came up with this list, and I'm going to start from the bottom. Uh, Climate Reality is the Al Gore project, and my understanding is Karen Snyder and Marty Roach attended a training session a couple of years ago, and Linda Eleanor just came back from the most recent one in Houston, Texas. And uh, the particular page that this links to is what they call their leadership core. So through this page, you may be able to find individuals in your geographical market who have attended this climate reality training. 
and that's why I picked that particular page. Um, we've talked about a couple times now Transitions USA, uh, and this page takes uh, you to a link uh, on their website where they're listing their transition towns. I would note, however, that it varies how active those towns are because um, they list Chicago and we're not really active with the Transition Town project here in Chicago. Uh, the next one on the way up is Catholic Climate Covenant. And again, the link takes you to a particular page where they list their Catholic climate ambassadors around the country. And so, for example, we had the Chicago one speak at our Faith and Sustainability Forum uh, last October. I believe, Marty, you said you knew the person out in the Bay Area, and I don't know whether our Denver colleagues have connected yet, uh, but there's a climate ambassador in the Denver area. And again, this could open up an opportunity to engage that ambassador in your structured program, as well as them having names of other people to invite to the event. Uh, I'm going to circle back to 350 in a second because it's come up a couple times, but Citizens Climate Lobby uh, is also something that Marty's very active with and a couple of our Chicago people are very active with. And um, I uh, delayed reporting on Chicago, but we're actually going to be planning three forums uh, this fall. Uh, the first one is going to be uh, Save is Working with on the south side with one of our Chicago Sustainable Leaders Network who's doing a uh, all-day event on October 29th for youth with a focus on uh, climate change as well as some of the other uh, police trust issues that Courtney was talking about as part of her event. Our west side event uh, which uh, is going to also be engaging some volunteer time from Dick Alton who's one of the west side citizens climate lobby people will be focused on CCLL, CCL's agenda and we're scheduling a uh, follow-up planning phone call with uh, David Marty who's the Great Lakes Regional Coordinator with Citizens Climate Lobby. Uh, the final one is 350.org. Uh, ICA USA has uh, board approved becoming a uh, ally of 350 Chicago which is uh, taking their divestment campaign here in Chicago to a city council resolution to get the city of Chicago to divest itself of fossil fuels. Um, and we're going to be planning a session here at the Green Rise on the north side about how they could be expanding their partners uh, in outreach to city council members. But several other folks, Sonny uh, talked about working with 350 uh, in Colorado. Liesl brought it up. And actually, Savin and I have a phone call on Wednesday with 350 Pittsburgh. And I think out of all of these national organizations, I would highly encourage people uh, to outreach to 350. I think nationally, uh, they're very open uh, to this kind of partnership and this kind of engagement. And outside of questions, I'm complete and ready to turn over to Karen. This is Sherwood. Just a quick question, Ted. Uh, divesting in Chicago of fossil fuel, is that divesting the city of using fossil fuel? Or no, that, that divesting, divesting your investments? Invest that's divesting your investments. Okay. And, the, and the Pittsburgh campaign is focused on Pittsburgh-based foundations divesting their portfolios from fossil fuel investments. Thank you. Okay. So you, can see, you can see the next uh, item on the agenda is menu of facilitation resources for October action on climate change. And can I, this is lethal, can I just add one more organization? Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. Yeah. In, in K, I heard interfaith earlier, and what what I've decided to do here in Brooklyn, not to go through all the bureaucracies, is to use U United Religions Initiative, which is relatively unknown in the U.S., but 800 local circles in war-torn countries around the world. So it's fairly easy. I've got now like 10 traditions, including atheism and indigenous, represented. So you can call together a local circle, you fill out an application. So it's just if you need a format that say we're going to start world peace with climate peace, you know, something like that. If you need that, 
it's right up on the web, uri.org. And each, each circle is autonomous. Good. Okay. So um, a few months ago when we first started making uh, these plans for October, we started collecting uh, where people have done some events, either conversations or workshops or some planning with different groups on climate change. And I believe you can see this page that says a menu of resources. Um, tell me if you don't see it. <laughs> anyway, uh, you'll see on the left-hand side that there's like four conversations that are sample conversations that have been used in the past. And on the right-hand side are uh, five different action planning and workshops. So like for instance, uh, let's just start with conversations where it says focus conversations. So uh, Rachel Hefty did three, she took three film trailers and she developed a conversation using just the trailer that's on the website. So if you go down after you, this is just the outline of the whole um, 10 pages here. So if you go down here, you can see that here's one of the conversations. The price of carbon from the Climate Reality Project was one of them. Another one was chasing ice trailer. And the third one was, this changes everything. So she used these conversations uh, after seeing like a three minute or seven minute um, film trailer, whatever it was. Uh, this spring I did a conversation with this changes everything with the University of Chicago during the One Earth Film Festival. And so there's, on the next page, you, know, you, go, you just keep scrolling down and you can see these sample conversations. Marty has done one with um, on resist climate at the resist climate change summit. So her sample is there, and also she did a climate cafe, and uh, the uh, questions that she used are are uh, follow. So you can go through these ten pages and and see all of these sample conversations. If any one of them strike you, or if you want to know more about it. If you want to know more about Marty's conversation on the Climate Cafe, well, then you can contact Marty and take it from there. And the same thing is true of the workshops. We have a sample consensus workshop that was done uh, in Minneapolis by Rachel. Another one on long-term visioning, a workshop method that Jim Wiggle did when he was just using the study, the Pope's encyclical. And in Stillwater, they did, um, Procedures that have both the procedures and questions for a sustainable Stillwater, Minnesota kickoff event that they did. And then I was involved in a community planning event uh, that is more extensive than is here. So you just click on these uh, links, like the Austin Roadmap, and you'll see the document itself. You see this document link here, you just click on that and up comes the document. And so you can see what was, uh, what was the result of doing that climate action planning. I, I just want to point out, this is the Austin neighborhood of Chicago, not Austin, Texas. Yes, mm -hmm. very good point. And then also there's a, there's a link just to see um, the procedures that were used. This was actually done in three evenings, but it could be adapted to a one day session if, if need be. Well, these are the ones that are in here at the moment, but I would really like to add uh, like, uh, Linda's work on the bone dialogue could be added to the conversations. And I even thought about when Courtney gave her report and she mm -hmm. wrote the flyer, we could make a section that would just be flyers and, and PR things that are used. And then all of this can be sent out to each of you on this call and to others that are interested. Um, I'll send, I'll make sure that you all get it after this call. But anybody who emails me and says that they want this, I can easily email it to you and then you can add your own pieces. I can send this to Courtney and she can, she can add the flyer. Or if you have trouble adding, send it to me and, and I'll make sure it happens. Usually I call on Caitlin <laughs> to help me. <laughs> so basically that's just it to show you that there's this resource available of different things that have been done um, and that we could continue to add to it as uh, these events unfold. Any questions? This is Sherwood. Uh, thanks, Karen. That was great. Uh, good to be with you all. I've got to run to an appointment.
So ciao. I sure would. I sure would. So um, this is Marty. Did um, Karen, you, so this is how, if people lose the thread on how to get on this Google Doc, what's the best way to get, find our way back to it? Or how do you recommend that we don't lose track of this? Because I think that's the problem we yeah, all have. I don't know other than to just, uh, like I got a, David Flowers asked me today if I would send it to him. So I just emailed it to him. So if you contact okay. me, that's one way. Okay, contact you. Book, you. Great. Yeah, if you bookmark it, that might be the best way for you. I don't know. We, Thank Marty, you. This is Ted. We can certainly include the link again in our next email correspondence. I think re redundancy on this would really help. Right. Thank you. Right. Okay, I'll, I'll get out of here. Okay, I think we really do need to hang in here for the next agenda item, um, which is uh, the fact that it's come up a couple times of wanting to know what's going on and where it's going on. And right now, I think, uh, my apologies if I'm forgetting somebody, but it seems to me that we really only have four confirmed dates. That's Colorado on October 22nd, Phoenix on October 26th, one of the Chicago forums on October 29th and the Milwaukee one on October 18th. And so, uh, Caitlin, are you available to uh, uh, bring up this uh, service report form? Uh, SAVA designed a form which we would like people to fill out and return to us so that we know uh, when these events are happening, where they're happening, uh, and who the primary contact is. And uh, it's already been suggested to me by a number of our ICA colleagues who are here in Chicago this week for their archive sojourn uh, to uh, do a general ICA email uh, so that uh, some of our colleagues in other parts of the country might know that one of these events is happening near them and be interested in attending. And now I'm gonna mute myself and turn it over to Caitlin to walk us through the form. Hi everyone, uh, hopefully I'm not muted anymore, but um, you'll see here that this is the sort of first page where you enter in your general information. Um, so whoever is entering it in, we want to have a follow-up uh, contact, so that will move you towards the next section. Uh, and this is where the meat of the document is. It's uh, asking for the top contact and your lead organization, community organization name, and uh, additional contacts in here. I don't think I can proceed, let's see. I can, awesome. So after you've entered in your contact for both your top and um, your partner, the next section here is the scope of your event. Uh, I should say that as you can see, I can move forward without filling out everything. So it's okay to not have all of your details set in place, but having um, your contacts in there is very useful and maybe putting in your date, as you can see, if not solidified, just a general range. The scope, this helps uh, when we were talking earlier about how um, we're all working on in these different areas of the, the country and maybe different topics. This will help us maybe uh, have an easier time of collaborating if we have similar scopes of um, interest. And then it's just general questions like how many people do you think will come and promotional flyers. Uh, here it's saying you can send them to SAVA. I think it is a good idea, Karen, that we can also put them in the, the menu document. Um, and these two are pretty important. Is there anything that we could do to help support your event? Uh, and is there anything else that you'd like us to know? So these are general open-ended questions. Um, but right now that's the, the form that we have. And uh, I'd be willing to hear suggestions for additional questions or additional inquiries that you think would be needed. So why don't I suggest for the sake of time, if uh, people would take a look at it, and if you have an additional question that you think we should be asking, if you could email it to me and I'll share it with Caitlin and Seva. Um, and uh, it also, I think came up earlier, somebody asked about getting an updated map. Uh, I think as of today's reports, we haven't really added any cities yet, but as people like Melanie in Portland, Oregon to the Agree, they start filling out this form, then we could set a cutoff date and start doing an updated version of the map uh, and letting people know uh, where this is happening around the country. And then the other thing I was going to offer is that while I'm using a larger 
uh, list of people that we invite to these webinars uh, as having expressed an interest in the top climate action team. Uh, as we finalize who's doing this, I can create a subset that are the active contacts who are doing a, an event in the fall, and then that can be shared directly with everybody doing it. So if somebody has a question of Courtney, they can directly respond to Courtney as well and not confuse it with the larger issue, larger list that we would want to mm -hmm. keep engaged. Uh, I'm complete, and I think if there's questions, we can take them. Uh, the only other thing I would note, I don't think we have the time today, but we do have a preliminary draft of an evaluation form that we would ask people to complete uh, when their event is going on, and uh, we can share that by email rather than taking the time now. Uh, Caitlin, you actually had it ready to, to, to bring up, correct? Yeah, I just popped it up right now just right. to show that it, it exists, but I agree that all these things can be commented on later. Thank you, Caitlin. So, so we can also send be, that out. Yeah, well, these, all, these will all be sent out after, the links yes. will be sent out after the meeting, so we'll, right. we'll all have them. And I would just like to add at this point, if there's anybody else that you on the call know should be plugged in or be aware of some of this, this is a good time to do outreach and to share some of these these um, connections and try to um, keep more of the top and ICA community informed. So I just want to, um, the main thing that we really need to cover is just going to take a couple minutes. And that's um, our last agenda item, which is, is really interest in future webinars for the top climate action team. And um, we do have a tentative date of November 15th, which will be a Tuesday to have a, you'll see here, it's the second bullet there in this agenda item, where we really do a debrief on the forums that did happen in October. So I think, I think there's gonna be enough of us that are gonna be very interested in that, that um, I think that's a solid date. You'll wanna note that date and we want you to participate with us in that debrief. The bullet above it is an idea that's been floating around and that's the idea of is there should we have a time where we could invite some of our local partners into a call with us so they can understand and, and Ted might want to speak to this um, more cogently than me but where we can bring our partners aware of the dimensions of this initiative in terms of its geographic scope and its intent and also help stimulate their thinking by learning about what other communities are doing about how local partnerships could enrich their ability to um, do this work with us. So the question that's on the table, um, and you may have more questions about exactly the purpose of this event, is should we schedule before October, we've got Monday, September 26th as a tentative time, another webinar, which would mean we would have to be interested in inviting local partners to come with us to this webinar for the purpose I just discussed. So um, any questions on what I'm asking? And then I think if we could pull down this agenda so I could see everybody, I'm gonna, I'd like to just check for, for interest. But this is a question on this webinar, September 26th, with bringing local partners into a call like this. Um, it might be on Adobe Connect, not, it might use Zoom. It, we don't yet know the platform, but it would be an, an online call to connect our partners. Any questions on this or reactions to this idea? A little couple comments before I ask for a show of interest. Um, I just would note um, that if we were involving local partners, the September uh, one would need to be designed differently uh, for them. <clears throat> if we're just deciding to do another check-in on how it's going with the top facilitators, that's a different kind of functional meeting, which we could still do on that date. So, uh, but the issue okay. is do we need to design something differently and I'm complete. So could I hear from people who have active projects underway that have partners? Is this something you would, that you feel is gonna be useful at this point in our evolution to bring together some partners into a call. I know we've got, see um, someone on the phone wants to talk, I forget who this is. Is this Liesl or who is this? Yeah. Did you, did you have a comment on that Liesl? I just saw you. Uh-uh, no, 
Okay. I, I haven't touched my phone. Okay, it just started to light up. Okay. Linda. Well, the only thing I could think that would maybe make it um, interesting to the people I'm working with would be um, if we had some kind of, um, I don't know, some kind of demonstration of what top methods were, you know, because they don't, they're just going into this blind, just assuming that I know what I'm talking about and they don't know anything about anything about top. So if we had something that was like a canned way of explaining top procedures and methods, that might be of interest. And then the only other thing, we had talked briefly about it informally and maybe we don't have enough time to do it, but uh, I would think that it might be of interest to show some of the more, most recent Al Gore slides because he has, in this um, workshop that I just came back from, he has a sense of urgency that I think is really profound. Um, that, he, you know, he's, he's very, it's very hopeful. His message is extremely hopeful, but it really gives you the sense, we got to do it now it might be in you know it might be um inspirational is what i'm thinking okay anyone want to comment on on what would so linda you would invite partners to to get on the call if we had it i would invite them i don't know that they'll come but i would make right. it available okay. yeah. other other um <coughs> interest or reactions oh, Richard. hello yeah yeah in terms of Denver, um, we're walking the tightrope between people jumping off a cliff and asking them to do one more thing. But I think the, certainly the university people would be interested in what's happening with other university student, the student movement part of it, um, because there's, there's a lot of, um, not confusion, but I, I think there's um, some ambiguity about what exactly they could do and what, what have been some of the better things that have happened with students in, uh, that would be Wartburg and uh, Metro State. Whether or not September 26th would work, I don't know. I mean, it can't hurt to ask them. Um, Regis, we haven't done anything with other than what well, couple meetings at Sunny has followed up on, but we don't have student pieces in place yet at Regis. We have student pieces in place at Wartburg and Metro State. So, so this is Ted. Uh, Rachel put a comment in the chat box, I guess, because she was concerned about her audio. Rachel says she would like to invite the Twin Cities transition coordinator so she can get a flavor of what is happening. Okay. So it sounds like there's, there's a few sites that are actually moving forward for October actions that would invite. And um, of the other sites that are act, active, for example, Courtney, if something was going on, would you open this up and see if people wanted to come? Is this, or do you think this would derail? Uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think people might be interested. I just, uh, it's just a random assortment of folks and we gathered together probably, I would, if I invited people, I could probably invite like 50 people that are helping on the ground, <laughs> like they own it, you know, so I don't know who to really pick. Who to pick <laughs> as a partner. Folks okay. who know a lot about the methods. Um, I could, if I was busy, I could try to make sure somebody else was there to talk about what's going on with Phoenix and maybe invite a student or, you know, if you guys told me who was here, then maybe I could pick someone that would be. Oh, okay. Uh, this is, this is Ted. After having done another planning meeting with Milwaukee, um, I think this kind of uh, event with for local partners may be better off to be planned afterwards. Um, that uh, each of our events, whatever the events are, could designate a couple co-leaders. And in our debriefing session in mid-November, we could plan maybe an early December peer sharing that would involve a couple you know, of the local partners. I, I think I'm feeling that uh, as many people have said, like Olivan, that there's so much other Good stuff going to, on to be done to make them happen, that this is probably not necessary. I, you know, I, I'll take an extra phone call to explain to somebody else in Milwaukee why we're doing what we're doing. Um, rather than I've seen kind of, some head nods with okay. that. So maybe, so maybe we could plan something in this early December, but I think we would still need our debriefing to plan that. 
Yeah. Right. So, well, the debriefing call in November, I think, were confirmed. And Ted had suggested if we don't do the leaders on September 26, we could even just open it up for a casual check-in. We, we, right. I don't think we're going to have so much feed forward information, but it would be a good time for people to come together to start to learn and observe and also to report. And Sunny, did you have something you wanted to comment? Um, yeah, I was thinking that uh, doing it afterwards might be a critical piece to something that's ongoing. <laughs> it doesn't stop because we did yes. something in October. <laughs> and that is one hired. of the, it's one of the variables we all need to be looking at. Are we doing a one-off event or where is this event leading us in the journey of further organizing in our communities around yeah. climate action? And by the way, just for our informal check-in on September 26, we could still do what Linda was suggesting and look at some of the new Al Gore slides because those could be things that the top folks could utilize in their events. If and we yeah, also so we could do a blend. We could do a blend of some climate reality slides and checking in, and that could be a simple agenda right. for September. Sunny. Um, we also found some really fabulous new things to look at when we met with Maria Tolero last uh, Wednesday. Who's, she's with uh, Colorado Climate Courage. It's a new organization, but she's brilliant. And she's on the lookout for audio visuals. She says that world is changing constantly. And uh, she also had us thinking about whether you wanted to show something that shocked people. It was very disturbing or something that was very uh, factual and informative or, you know, of course, going to the more hopeful, which mm -hmm. tends to be where we'd want to go, I would think. But yeah. there are options in all of those categories and quite a few. I'd love to hear more, Sunny, about her. Okay. <laughs> So I think we've reached kind of a decision on this, that we will have a call on Sept in September, the 26th date. We will have the debrief in November. And from that, we will plan a further webinar that'll involve some partners um, soon in December or as soon as we can organize it. Mm -hmm. so, so thank you all for hanging in much longer than we had thought um, this call was going to go. We thought it would be a little bit um, shorter. And I just don't know if anyone has um, any, any closing comment um, on what you're taking away. Or maybe just, um, you know, what's, feeding, what's one thing that's feeding your inspiration about this work that we're doing? Mm -hmm. I, I found I was just rather taken up at different moments in this call by the excitement of all these awesome things you're doing. So if any, anyone want to share, maybe a couple shared comments on what you're taking away or what's really, what's one inspiration, what's something that's feeding your inspiration from this work that we are doing together. Linda, and then I think Courtney maybe wanted to say something. Yeah, just very briefly for me, I, I think it's been a lonely, uh, lonely ride doing this work as a climate activist. I know when I started two years ago, I didn't know anybody who was a facilitator doing it. So all of, all of a sudden, I feel like I'm, you know, in my my um, my tribe. So it feels good. They're just having people type. Great, Courtney. I know um, when we originally were talking about this, we were talking about how different communities are going to come at it as well. And I think it's exciting that we're doing the police and neighborhood trust piece and that that's going to happen in some of the other cities as well. Great. Great. Okay. Well, thank you all for being on the call. I'm waving to people I can see and I'm waving to people on the phone too. Bye, Great. everybody. We'll, Bye. We'll, get, we'll get out the registration form and the other information to keep yeah. everybody up to date. Thanks again for your Great. time. Okay. Keep it, keep it going. Right. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.